Hey there, guys. This is Dragon Master here, and I want to welcome you to Episode 4 of Star Wars in Earth, codenamed The Phantom Trap. I wanted to say a few things before I start the whole video. Uh, personally, uh, Jelly, I'm going to call you for short because the end of your like, name is kind of hard to pronounce. I am sorry for mistaking it. I do apologize. Also, I wanted to say... Uh, for the whole episode, I will be using Mass Effect, Halo, and all the other characters from space, from all the space and sci-fi shows. Just pointing that out. They are going to have, I guess, the same lore in a kind of, like, some, I mean, not using all of them, but some of them will have the same lore. But really, that's all I wanted to say. So without further ado, let's start the video. Now, as we start off, I wanted to say a few things. Uh, the Republic, as you know, offered the Terrans uh, basically a sort of senator position in the Republic. And a whole meeting with the with United Nations took place, and they all agreed and voted on one person, a young senator named Councilor Udini. He would basically represent Earth in the Senate and all of Earth's colonies. He would head to Coruscant along with two young uh, co commander for ground troops and a captain for the future fleet. The captain's name was Hackett and the young commander was Anderson. Both uh, accompanied Udini and as they landed, they also noticed a silver dome of an elegant ship landing. And that's where our stories from episode three begins. Um, all three of the men are surprised to see the young boy, and then a whole entourage of royal royal guards, a uh, queen, and many handmaidens, along with droids and a few Jedi, which they know little about the Jedi. Just point that out. But then another ship sea land at the landing pad, and it's the Chancellor, along with Senator Palpatine of Naboo they had seen in Holovitz. And they are surprised at this, and a whole conversation happens, and they learn about the whole blockade about of Naboo from the Trade Federation, who had been helping them the past year. They enter the ship and talk with the Senator Palpatine, along with the Chancellor on the matter. And and they all agree to, well, really Hackett and Anderson agree to help the queen, but Udini doesn't want to, as he knows that this could hurt them, as the Trade Federation is one of the few reasons that the Huts and all the criminal organizations have been staying away from Earth. And they make their way to the Senate, and the whole conversation with the Senate goes on, but Udini, Hackett, and Anderson are there and see the whole corruption thing. And Udini is kind of a bit optimistic. He he feels bad for the people, but his real main priority is Earth. But Anderson and Hackett know. So they enter the Queen's chambers just as Anakin walks out, and they tell the Queen but they want to help and offer a way how they can sneak them on will really help them. As for er, the United States has just finished the first ship and it's been placed under Captain Hackett's command. So Anderson and the Queen, along with Hackett, plan a strategy. And the Jedi return, who the two men, Anderson and Hackett, get to formally meet. Anderson uh, contacts his his soldiers and picks the most trustworthy and loyal to him and so does Hackett of his men and they all make their way on the ship explaining to the United Nations Space Command that they're taking it on a test drive and they're able to get away so the plan is for them to sneak on the Trade Federation ship really just to say that they're here to collect supplies from the ship or drop them off while the Naboo and ship is able to sneak past the lines uh, they'll be able to land the ship and meet with Gunray for trade deals. And they'll secretly sneak their troops into the palace. And when it happens, they'll take out the droids, leaving no evidence that was them. Meaning their deal with the Trade Federation won't be compromised. 
It's a good plan. But to everyone's surprise, Udini enters, explaining that he won't risk it and decides to help them because he doesn't want to risk it in case the plan goes wrong for Earth. So as everything is being planned, someone else is basically... Well, Palpatine listens in and tells Plagueis. Plagueis is... He informs Plagueis, who's more than pleased. And pl- this is all part of Plagueis' trap. And he, con- and he and Palpatine tell Maul to take out, fight the Jedi while he will deal with the Terrans personally. But he informs them not to tell Gunray because he doesn't want Gunray ruining the whole plan. So everything goes how it was planned. The ship arrives, they get clearance, and ship lands at Naboo in the main capital, Fi. They make their way to the palace, and they talk with Gunray and head to the hangar that basically put the supplies there. And as we know, the whole events of the episode one, the movie plays out the Jedi and take the hangar, but... And the Terrans join in on the fight. Hackett commands the ship while Anderson leads the troops. But to everyone's surprise, when the doors open, not only is Maul there, but another dark hooded figure emerges. It's Plagueis, who pulls out a crimson lightsaber. His plan is to kill the Terrans, then tell Gunray about the whole Terrans plot kill the queen, well, capture the queen, force her to sign, or he knows that she has cares for Anakin and friends to kill him. Udini is surprised. Hackett is surprised. Anderson and everyone is surprised. Hackett from the ship is surprised to see these hooded, this hooded, and they know who Plagueis is. See, it's Plagueis, sorry. Plagueis is a banker and they've seen him in holograms but they're surprised really a big fight ensues with the jedi taking on maul while the terrans fight off plagueis plagueis wants to test their abilities and a whole and a fight in plagueis notices something interesting about these terrans they have a few immunities to the force such as they can't be force choked not only are they not be able to be able to be force choked, they're also not be able to be force lifted, which surprises them. They are not immune to his lightning or force pushes, but he realizes that that force attacks that direct directly attack their body or anything like lifts or chokes does it affect them. So he switches to more. Straight up, straight attacks of his lightsaber and force lightning. He pushes them all over. He pushes them into reactors, cuts them apart. Anderson doesn't know what Udini hides, and as he sees Palp, he sees, I mean, sorry, Anakin fly off. He hides behind the crates that Anakin, the ship was. And ha- Hackett then arrives along with backup, and they all try to, along with Anderson, fight. Udini pushes some things into Plagueis, but easily cuts them down and nearly kills Udini as he jumps, but is shot in the leg by Anderson. Plagueis is furious and feels pain. He then force pushes this is Anderson, but Hackett catches him. The Terran troopers quickly surround him, and as he keeps fighting, he fights killing almost half of them before they finally shoot him multiple times in the gut. Plagueis falls down to his knees. He is surprised and realizes that this is not a normal species. He then, but then he realizes something, and then he grins as they all open fire, and he falls into the reactor. They quickly, they quickly check up on Udini, who's all fine, but then they run over and hear a scream. They see that Qui Gon is dead. And Obi Wan then immediately charges them all. They immediately charge, but the time they reach there, Maul is dead. They see Obi Wan, and they all comfort Qui Gon as he dies. They all find out that Anakin is a slave, but and this causes much confliction with them, including Udini, who feels bad how he sort of he sort of judged Anakin, but now he realizes he had a hard life. 
So the events would turn out, they would luckily be able to cover their butts and make sure that they weren't involved at all, really. So they saved themselves that trouble. But they do attend the funeral just to pay respects. And they say it's just to pay respects for a man saying he had lying, saying he helped him with a debt before. So basically, that would be it for them. They would head home and... Yeah. Udini, Hackett, and Anderson would all agree for it. Qui-Gon asked them to keep an eye on Anakin, and they would all agree. Along with the soldiers, they all kept it quiet, and they all returned home. They would tell the whole United Nations Space Command, along with United Nations, about this, and they would be a bit interested in the Sith. And would agree to keep an eye out, explaining, which they heard from Yoda saying... There are always two, no more and no less, and realized there was another Sith. But they had some suspicions. They had some suspicions it was Palpatine, as they had seen Plagueis with him. But they agreed to keep an eye on Palpatine. And they look through the ship's view in port and look into the stars. They had a bright future for them, but they would need to be vigilant. And that is where this video is going to wrap up. I wanted to say a few things. Um, I'm so happy for the support we received on all our videos. We also, I also have 18 subscribers on the channel. So I do thank you all who have subscribed. And that's really all. But please leave your comments down below. And that's basically it. So please subscribe and goodbye.